Welcome back to our tutorials on the basics of Python. And today we'll be covering our second tutorial into the basics of Python, where we fo mainly focus on loops and lists. So let's begin. So before we begin and take a full dive into loops and lists, let's review the object types that were discussed in the last tutorial. There are five main object types in Python, integers, which are whole numbers, floats, which are decimals, strings, which are any arrangement of characters or numbers, lists, which contain strings, floats, and integers, and dictionaries, which are similar to lists, but where they have a key and a value. Concept, string operations. So when we collect an input from a user, we can't predict how they're gonna give it to us. They can give it to us capitalized, all lowercase, or if they're feeling emotional, they might even give it to us all capitalized. So to combat this issue, we, we will actually face issues when we try to maybe put it put their input against an if statement and when we're comparing it with something else because Python is case sensitive. So if something is capitalized, but the exact same word, it won't find it to be a match. So that's why we need to sometimes convert our user's input into a lowercase, uppercase, or capitalized form however you format your program. So here we are given some, some syntax for converting strings. So here you can see we're collecting an input of what is your name, and then we're printing out different versions of it by converting it into lowercase, uppercase, and capitalizing it. So if you take a strings, string variable dot lower, it'll convert it into a lowercase. If you take a string variable dot upper, it'll convert it into an uppercase. In this case, name.upper, name being the, the string variable. And then if you do string variable dot capitalized, you're gonna get the first letter capitalized and the rest lowercase. I usually use um, string variable dot lowercase just to make everything very easy throughout my program and to avoid running into errors. Concept, loops in Python. There are two types of loops in Python. There are while loops and there are for loops. While loops need a condition. So like in this example I have right here, while grade is less than 85. And then for loops on the other hand, they don't need a condition, they work in a range. So here we have an example for variable name in range ABC. I'll explain that in a moment. But let's go back to while loops super quick. If you look at the example that I have right here, we have X equals zero, we're initializing the variable X. Then we have a while loop where we say, while X is less than 10, we're gonna print out X. And then every time before we repeat the loop, we're gonna add one to X. So then if you go down to the shell to see what results came out, we see that we get zero, one, two, it's adding one every time until we get to nine. Because once we get to nine, it, be, it adds one to it, becomes 10. And then the while loop sees, oh, X is larger than 10, end of loop. So that's how while loops work. They always need a condition and they will, they, they will terminate themselves once that condition is not being satisfied anymore. Um, for, for loops, for loops are a little bit different. They work in a range. They don't have a condition. So if you take a look at the example right here, I have a for variable in range 0, 20, 2, print var. So let's, let's break this down into pieces. So we have for var in range. So the var is a variable that we initialize in the for loop. It is, a, it is not gonna be a variable that we used from before, brand new variable. So for variable in range, 0, 22. So as you can, so you can see here, I have A, B, C in my example. So what is the A? A is where we start counting from. For loops basically count. So we're gonna start counting from zero. B is, in, in my example, 20. And 20 is where I'm gonna stop. If um, variable or this var equals 20, we're going to terminate the loop. And then the two that I have right here is C from this, from right here in my example. And that's equal to the step. The step is basically how much we're adding by each time when we're repeating the loop. Up here in this while loop example, the step was one. Down here, we're using the step as two. And you can see that in the shell when we're counting because it goes from zero, two, four, six, eight, and so on. For loops are, mo are more commonly used and much more easier for counting than while loops. 
both can accomplish the same thing, but for loops do counting in a much more efficient and compact way, while while loops do more work for satisfying a condition. And also while loops are commonly used for the while, while true loop, which is a loop that is going on forever unless broken manually. So here we arrive on our first challenge. It's called spam. We're gonna write code that asks the user for their name. Then we're gonna say hello 100 times. We're gonna say hello name 100 times. And then we're gonna add the total number of times at the end of each print statement. And then at the end, we're gonna print finished. So let's open up Python. I have it quick and easy to access right here. So this is the shell. Let's make a new file, drag this right over here. And before we start coding, it's really important that we always save our files and save our work so we don't lose it in the case of our computer crashing or something happening. So I'm gonna name this file loops and lists. So let's begin. So the first part of that challenge was to ask for the user's name. So we're gonna do name equals input what, and here we're gonna ask a question. What is your name? Close the parentheses. Now we're gonna spam them. And since we're counting, as you may recall, it's saying say hello 100 times and add the total number of times at the end of each print, print statement. So since we're counting the number of times we've set it, it'll be best that we use a for loop since for loops are the best for counting. So let's do for, any variable, let's call, it, let's call it var in range. And we're going from zero to 100. And then we're, we're gonna do steps of one. Since we're doing steps of one, we don't have to include it because Python already knows that if you don't include anything, for, any argument for C or any value for C, it's automatically gonna assume you're doing steps of one. So we don't need to put anything there. So just to, just to test it out, let's, why don't we print out var? So let's run it. Ask for what is my name. And it's gonna count to 199. So actually what we need to do for our B argument here, or the, the number where we stop, we need to put it at 100 and one because it's stopping at 99 because it'll go to 100 and then it'll say, oh, I'm at 100, I'm done, it'll stop. So that's why we need to add one more so it'll go all the way up to 100. So now we, what we need to do is to, set, to satisfy the criteria of this challenge, we need to print out their name and hello. So let's start off with printing out hello, and then we'll print out their name, and then comma var. So I think that should do the trick. Let's run it. What is your name? Say my name. There we go. I just got spammed 100 times greeting me. So let's move on to the next challenge. Challenge, odd or even. Print numbers from one to 50. And if the number is even, print even next to it. If the number is odd, we print odd next to it. Very simple. So since we're counting again, what we want to do is use a for loop. So let's go back to Python. Let's comment all of this out. And let's use a for loop. For, this time I'm gonna name my variable x in range zero, 51. And then, since we are testing if they are odd or even, we're gonna to have to use an if or else statement. So let's do if x when divided by two, if the remainder is zero, this percentage means what is the, whatever the remainder is of the division problem. So x divided by 2, the remainder has to be 0. So that means it's an odd, an even number. We're going to print out x, the variable x. And then next to it, we're going to print out this number is even. Then, and this, uh, it's, either, it's like a coin. It's either odd or even. We don't have to use an else if statement. We can just use if and then else without any statement. And we can just do print x. This is a 
odd number. I think that should be enough. Tell us which numbers are odd and which numbers are even from 0 to 150, 0 to 50. So let's check the work. 0, this number is even. 1, this number is odd. 2, this number is even. Perfect. So all so the computer has now been able to tell us whether a number is odd or even. So that challenge has been completed. Let's move on to the next one. Challenge. Millionaire. Print the numbers from 1 to 1 million, but only print numbers that are multiples of 10,000. So again, we're counting, so we have to use a for loop. And this time, since we're only wanting numbers that are multiples of 10,000, we're going to be counting by 10,000. So that means we're going to have an argument or a value for C. So let's go back to Python. Let's comment this all out. And then we're going to do another for loop. For x in range 0 to 1 million and 1, we're going to count by steps of 10,000. And then we'll just print out x. Looks like I, count, I was counting up to 100,000. So I'm going to make it 1 million. Hopefully it'll work this time properly. Count all the way. So there you go. So we start from 0, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, so on. So there we go. We are a millionaire now. So challenge completed. Next challenge. Challenge. Multiplication tables. Ask the user for a number between 0 and 12. Print out his multiplication table from x times 0 to x times 12. It should look like the example at the right. So as you may see, the, the title of this challenge has been highlighted in red, which means that this is a progress check challenge. I will not be performing this challenge on the video, but right now I expect you to pause the video and attempt this challenge yourself. At the end of the unit, you will turn in these challenges to be reviewed so you can move on to the next part of Python. Similarly, this next challenge is also a progress check challenge, and you'll have to submit this one. And in this one, where you draw a star staircase, use a for loop to draw this pattern right here. And the range will be 1 to 15. And one helpful hint is that you should use a string variable, which is equivalent to the asterisk or the star. And then you should multiply that string variable so you can get a nice resulting staircase like the one pictured right here. Concept, lists in Python. Lists contain multiple values. So that could be an integer, a float, or a string, or you could even have a list of lists. And the way we denote a list is using a square bracket. And we, we separate our items by using a comma. And each item is list, in the list is numbered. But Unlike us, we usually list the we number the first thing in a list as number one. What the computer does actually is it starts from zero. So the first item in a list is zero. That means the fifth item in a list, what, what we might call a fifth item in a list, the computer will index it or reference it as the fourth item, as four. So if you want to call, let's say, the twelfth item in a list, you're going to have to call item 11 because the computer always starts at zero. So down here, I have, an, I have an example of a list. I have a list variable equal to different car brands. And as you can see, these are individual strings, but they're all within this list, and they're all separated by commas. So you can use lists for a ver variety of things in Python. Um, you can use it for grocery lists like we do in real life. You can, list, you can use a list to store something, a lot of things of the same nature. I've personally used lists when I'm making games, and I need to and I need to track the coordinates of, let's say, a mouse or a player or the moves of a player or keystrokes. So concept, adding to a list. Append can I add an item to a list at the end. So the syntax is list variable dot append. And then don't forget your parentheses. So let's go to Python and let's create our own list and try that out. So let's comment this out. Let's make a list. 
let's make a list of car brands like we did in the example. So we name our list, which I named car. We start our list or denote it with a square bracket. And then we put in our item. So I'm going to put in Audi, BMW, Honda. And let's, let's just keep four items. So let's do Toyota. So we have our list right here. And if you take a look at the, at the, at the PowerPoint, if we do list var dot append, we can add items to the list. Inside of our parentheses, we need to add the item. So let's go to our Python program. And let's do car or list var, which is car in my case, car dot append. And then we're gonna we're gonna add Tesla. Let's close the parentheses off. And let's print out car. Let's see what the list looks like now. No one's surprised. Now we see Tesla in the list because we appended it or we added it to the list. Another way to add something to a list is to insert something. So up, what append does, it adds something to the end of the list. But let's say I want to insert something into the middle of the list. That's where you can use insert or list var dot insert to add whatever you want to your list. So the syntax for this one is a little bit different. The syntax for appending is you just place the item and it adds it to the end. But for insert, you have to add where to add it and then what to add. So as you may remember, as I discussed before, list starts at zero. So if I want to add something, insert something at, at the beginning of the list, I'd have to put zero as my A. But if I want to put in an item, let's say as my third position on my list, I, I would make A two because zero, one, two, that's the third item. So let's try insert. Let's comment this out. And let's do car.insert Tesla. Let's say Tesla is the number one car brand. So we're going to put it at zero. And we're going to print out car. So now, as you can see, let me make this a little bit bigger. You can see that Tesla, when we appended it, Tesla was at the end. And then when we inserted it at the beginning of the list, at position zero or index zero, Tesla comes to the front of the list. Now, if we would change that to number to, let's say, three, it would be at the fourth position in the list. Now let's run our program. As I predicted, Tesla is the fourth item in this list. So let's see what other list functions that we have. Let's look at this new concept, removing items from a list. Pop can remove an item from the end of a list if you don't put anything inside of the parentheses. However, if you do put a number inside the parentheses, it can pop or remove something from that index or location. So let's try that out for ourselves. So let's first do car.pop. And then let's print out car. So first we printed out car before we, we, we applied pop to it. And it, as you can see, the last item was deleted, which is Toyota. But now let's say, let's run that again, but let's pop the second item. So since we want to pop the second item, we're going to have to put one because of the counting of Python. So let's run that again. Hopefully this time we're going to lose BMW. So as we predicted, BMW is gone this time because we removed the second item in the list by popping it. Additionally, we have list var dot remove. It's very something that's very similar to popping, but you have to specifically name what item you want to remove. Instead of calling its index or location, you have to say, oh, I want to remove this item or object. So in this case, let's try removing Tesla. Let's do oh, sorry, dot remove. 
then we're going to remove Tesla. So, oh, I see the issue here. We spelled Tesla wrong earlier. So let's run that. Hopefully we won't get an error message this time. So we've been spelling Tesla the wrong the whole time, but now that I fixed it, we insert Tesla at the fourth position in our list, and then we remove Tesla by calling it by its name. So you use pop when you want to remove something by its location or index, and then we use remove when we want to remove something from a list by its, what it is specifically. Concept, other list functions. If we want to find, if we want to print out something from a specific position in the list, we can do print list var, and then we use the square brackets, and then the index of whatever we want to print, and it'll print out the second item in the list. Another thing we can do is we can do, we can set an item in the list equal to something and it'll update it. So let me show you an example of that right now. So let's comment all of this out. And let's move down here. So we have Audi, BMW, Honda, and Toyota. So let's say we just want to make this list full of German cars. So what I can do is I can do car square bracket two, because two would be the third item in the list, Honda, which is a Japanese car. We can turn it into Mercedes. And then we can also update the fourth item in the list by doing car square bracket three. And we can make that um, AMG, another car manufacturer, part of Mercedes. So now let's print out car. We should have a completely German, German list. And as you can see, by making the index of, or the locations in the list equal to something, we are updating the value. So it now becomes Audi, BMW, Mercedes, AMG, instead of Honda and Toyota, because we updated those values. Now, we also have random.shuffle, and then in parentheses, list variable. So before we can use that, we have to import the random module that we discussed in Python 1. But all this does is basically it shuffles the list. So if I want to do that to my list, what we can do is we have to first go to the top of our program and import random. Then go to our list right here and we do random random dot random shuffle random dot shuffle random dot shuffle and then our list variable car so now if we print out car we should get a whole different order so yeah so as you can see it's the list has been completely random not randomized this time away around and yeah, that's really helpful if you want to maybe make a quiz game and you want to randomize the order of the questions or if you want to choose a random question to give to your user. So other list functions. List var dot reverse can reverse a list. List var dot sort can alphabetize a list in alphabetical order. And then len and then if you put list var inside of it or your list variable gives you how long the list is or how many items are in the list. Challenge, login system. For this challenge, what we got to do is make a list of four users and four of their passwords. And the way we should format this is that the user at index zero should have their password at index zero. The user of index one in the users list should have their password at index one in the password list. Very simple. And then after we create our list, we got to ask the users for their name. And then if they are in the system, we check if they're in the system, we say, okay, what's your password? If they are in the system, we say, you do not have permission to access this system. And then let's say they have the correct pass username, but not the correct password. We tell them wrong password. But then if they have the right password and the right username, we're gonna say hello or welcome, and then their username. 
So why don't we try this in Python? So let's go to Python and let's comment out all our previous work. And the shell is a little bit messy, so I'm going to restart the shell. Python shell. Bring that over here. And let's begin. So we're going to have a list of users. So users equals square bracket me, Ryan. Let's have Bob. Let's, let's have Billy. And let's add Charlie. Now, let's make a list of their passwords. So, just for time's sake, I'm going to make everyone's password the same. Just one, two, three. And. Now that we, we've made the list, both usernames and passwords. So index zero and index zero of both lists, that's that's who it belongs to. So my, I am at index zero of users list. So my password is index zero. At index two, let's say, th this is the password for the user at index two. So let's let's start with the rest of the program. So we're gonna first ask for the username from the, from the user. So we're gonna do um, input or let's name the variable user name i because it's an input username equals input of username so we're going to ask for a username and then we're going to check if the username is in the list so the one way you can do that is using an if statement so if username i in list in list name so it's users we're going to then proceed to ask for their password so we're going to do password i, this the input again, equals input, and we're going to ask for their password. So, and then in, so we'll, now what we have to do is we have to, if they're not in the system, we got to say, you're not approved. So, you're not approved. So let's let's first test out our system. Now username, put Ryan. Password. So since I was in the user, since I was in the system, it's letting me put in my password. However, let's say I am an imposter, and I my name is Andrew. You are not improved. Perfect. So let's let's work on to the part of the password. So password equals input password question mark. So we're collecting the password. And now what we've got to do is check if their password is correct. So we, another if statement, but instead of doing in, we're going to do if password I is equal, equal to, because we're comparing two things. That's why we use two equal signs, equal, equal to passwords, the list, square bracket, then we're going to do user dot index because we're trying to find out the location from the first list. So, and then username, username I. So let's cl close off all our parentheses and I'll explain to you what we're doing here. So what we're going to do is we're comparing the password to their password. And the way we find their password in the list, not just anybody's password, is we take the index or the location of their username. So let's say I, for me, the location would be zero. So then we're gonna find what what is the password, what is a stored password in the list at zero, which is one, two, three for me. So is the password that I inputted equal to the password that is stored for me? If it is, we're going to say, welcome, print, welcome. Otherwise, we're going to print wrong password. Let's test out our program out. And 
whenever you're writing a program, it's always a good thing to test out every every single possibility or every scenario. You can anticipate everything and all the problems before users use it. So username. So let's let's type in someone who's approved. And looks like we've made a mistake because it's saying I am not approved. Let's try that one more time. I might have put a space on accident. Let's try that. There we go. So I actually that's that's an issue I made was that I put a space before typing in my name and it, did, it was not able to recognize me in the system. So now that we didn't put a space, it's asking me for my password. So let's put in one, two, three. It says welcome. Perfect. Actually, just to make it a little bit more personalized, let's add their username. So let's do username I. So just, just to keep it nice. But now let's run it again and let's run let's run it as someone who knows who's in the system, but they forgot their password. Two, three, four. Wrong password. Perfect. And then the last last scenario. I'm a complete imposter. My name is Andrew. You are not improved. Great. So our program now works, and I believe we have completed all the um, all the requirements for this challenge. Next challenge. This one is a progress check, and it's this this challenge is a username generator. We make a list of adjectives, and then we'll make a list of nouns. Then we use the random module, and then we we choose a random item from each list and generate a username randomly. So. I have an example of that posted here. So you have a list. Well, this this is a little bit of a funny example. It's for anime, but it, it does a really good job in showing what we're looking for. We're going to have a list of adjectives here, and then we're going to have a list of nouns right here. So then it's gonna you're going to use random to choose one random item from here, and then you're going to use random to choose a random item from here, and then you're going to make a username. Put them together and make a username. And this is a progress check, progress check challenge, and good luck. So that concludes our in-depth discussion of loops and, and lists for, pi for part two of learning the fundamentals of Python. We'll have more videos coming soon. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact me on our website or email me. I'm always available and please leave a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.